Mr. Randa, did we do okay? No, no. Did we do okay? No, 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 no. So, um, so questions from the commission. Um, uh, would anyone like to ask some questions? I, I have one. Do we need to commit to um, the both engines with one resolution now, or we buy one, and then if we get the second one, there's a second resolution with next year's money, uh, which would come later, we get the discounted price, and if not? If we wait till after the year, they're not gonna hold that price. All they want is a written commitment that we will buy the one a year later. Can't commit until no, the I town don't. votes for it. So you, you need them both together so, on so a vote? I'll, so I'll ask you, what do you think's a better? I think you gotta split them up. Split them up, okay. I think you have to split them up, but I think you've also identified there's a discount if we get that second one sooner than putting it off a year. Um, so we should get it next year. But we have that fire study coming up. I'd be apprehensive to sign on for two without at least, you know, we just paid $16,000 for the fire study to come in. They'll probably tell us we need three. Well, I just, I mean, just touch a base with the fire yeah. study. I mean, I, I've been against from the start. You guys are spending money on a study that I don't think you're going to hold to. If the thing comes back and says we have to lose an engine tomorrow, you'll, you'll cut an engine absolutely. If it comes back and says we need to hire three more guys, you're not going to hire three more guys. And then when something happens and some, somebody gets hurt, loses a life, you guys are now held responsible because you have a study saying that you needed better fire. It's going to evaluate the equipment needs of this town and, and how we should best um, manage the two fire departments and, and you know, and um, what, how we can collectively save some money. Right. Um, I, or and, not. As, and as and as if it exposes weaknesses, then it's got to expose weaknesses. We're going to know about them. Absolutely. So, I mean, I'm not speaking for Niagara, but as far as Flanders Fire Department, I know that they're not going to cut an engine from us. We don't have hydrants. Right. It's, I'm, you know, I'm more than confident we do have that five we're not going to lose a, right? We have five, five engines, engines in yes. town. Okay. I'm more than confident we're not going to lose one because of our 900 area. We don't have the water. So... Jim, you're going to have to get to the yep. mic. Yep. I am Jim Lewandowski. I am the chief of Flanders. I've allowed Hi, Jill to run with this project because this is what he's good at. Yes. Um, so the question I have for Mr. Nickerson is, what are you looking, what direction are you wanting us to head? Are you looking us to, obviously, at, from what I'm hearing, you're not interested in going with two? You're only interested in I one. I think you, um, I think, first of all, um, you're better. You're, you'd have a better chance of getting one at a time. Okay, and that's then that's fine. I, Especially because it's not in this year's CAP, but now we've exposed a, a, a direct need, an emergency need. You have a you have an engine that yes, we do. can't roll anymore. Right, it's, we can't put our people on it. I think, and I think as as Bill mentioned, I think we, I think it is throwing good money at bad. I right. don't think you're, if we're looking at replacing it next year. Um, then I, I don't see that we spend the money this year to to maintain it, to get it up to specs, because I think it's a lot of money to spend. I think you um, you planted some seeds. So we know that there's a need for two. We know there's a discount if we get two in the next 18 months, um, 12 months, but, you know, then they have to build it, so it's 18. Um, we know that the needs are coming. We also know that Niantic's truck is coming up in the next three, two or three years or three or four years. Right. So, um, you know, we just need a comprehensive plan. Uh, that's what the study's for. We'll let the experts do that. Right. But do you have a need? You've exposed, you've exposed that and addressed that, and I think this commission uh, values that, and you've done a good job, Mr. Ricks, of explaining that in great detail um, in, in, a, in a thoughtful way that we could understand it, because we're not in the fire business, but all of a sudden we are. Other questions? Thank you for a thorough presentation. Yes. Um, the existing uh, truck, is that, is there any value to that for a trade-in for parts or things? It'll probably just be worth the parts. Uh, with, could that be applied to the purchase price? Probably. They, I mean, they haven't given us a, a specific uh, quote on what they would give us for it. I mean, we ended up trading in the ladder truck to them, and that offset the price of that. So, did Nobody's going to pay any real money for that. The uh, equipment that Niantic has, is that the same as this particular vehicle? Equipment as far as? Uh, in other words, would it be of any advantage to us to, as these engines are older, would it be any advantage of us 
for us to keep the keep the existing vehicle for parts for our own vehicles. Our, our parts, no, because the only other uh, apparatus we have in town that matches that is our engine one. So, I mean, if we kept it for parts, we could. Um, it's only two years apart. But, uh, it's not going to match anything else in town. Okay, thank you. Good questions. Mr. Salerno, anything down there? Um, do you answer some of my questions? When yeah. do we expect the study to come back? Actually, uh, we just dropped off the um, contract, so it's a 90-day study, and it would start almost immediately. Okay. My next question was, Nyanic is going to have a need for one in a few years, too? Yeah. Just one? Right now. I, um, I have to as look at the know. list. Okay. I think it's one coming up soon. Um, you mentioned that, like, after 12 to 15 years, it's recommended to refurb. The, did we not? Did you say we didn't do that? We didn't do that. Is there a reason why we didn't do it? Was it budgetary criteria, or is it? I don't think it was looked at at the time. Okay. Um, that wasn't. It's always been an option. I don't know if it was even thought of. Okay. Is it something we're doing now, with, uh, or can we add that to our plan if it, if it's going to extend the life of them? It it probably should be in a plan to at least look at and see if it's worthwhile for that. Whatever yeah, that's the time. Truck yep. is look, you know. Yep. Um, just understand that you're the when I spoke to the different companies that do refurbing you're gaining possibly up to 10 years uh, yeah I think you have to look at money versus time I don't know no I'm just talking about if we get a new one in 12 years I, you want to get 20, 20 plus asking, yeah, I'm yeah. just showing yeah. that you might gain their comment yep. was you might gain up to 10 years by refurbing and I think you have to look at the value of $150 over 10 years that, right. yeah so we didn't look right. at it at the time. Why, I don't know that answer. Okay. Um, and is there any competitive bids we go through for this, or is there just kind of a couple um, dealers for this, and there's a Spiel dealer, or are there other? Um uh, last I know, like when we went through the ladder truck, we didn't have to go out the bid process because there's not an actual uh, ruling on that. It's up to you, uh, you guys or the Board of Finance that makes that. Board of Finance, that Board of Finance makes that. So we didn't have to go out to bid for the ladder truck because they had exactly what we were looking for at a discounted price. So we went to the same vendor that we have now because we have four other rigs in town and they're our vendor for uh, vehicle maintenance and whatnot. And just trying to keep everything the same and save money, we, we went right back to them and they took it on their own to build a, a demo at the risk that we may or may not buy it. So. Okay. So if we buy the demo model, then they won't have a demo model. So it would be likely that they'd build another demo model next year with the hopes that somebody else might buy it, we could probably which we might buy. <laughs> okay. Right. I think I have the feeling they sell only demo models. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone else? Yeah. <laughs> Everything's demo. Yeah, trust me, this one's not coming. No. I, half the stuff that came on the ladder truck. Yeah. Questions, comments? You cannot. This is not a public hearing. And I apologize, ma'am. So I see yes, at the, the end of the meeting you could. The New England Fire Equipment and Apparatus would be the people from whom we would purchase. They're the Smeal dealer. They're the local Smeal dealer. The yes. local Smeal dealer. I also noticed they're the ones who were saying it was not worth repairing. Yes. We're sure we're getting an objective. <laughs> they, also, they also stated that we need to have a DOT inspected right away because. Have we done that? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm waiting for a phone call back from the state to okay. how the, who's going to come out and do it. And Shipman's also said the same thing. And Shipman's only does refurbing. They don't even sell apparatus. So th we're a moneymaker for them, and they don't even want to touch it. <coughs> okay. Um, how long has the, the pump issue been going on? Did that just arise with this last fire? It, it's been on and off for road? about the last year or so. And then with the last fire, it's, it's too much. We can't take the risk anymore of having something like that happen. Typically, how often would this engine be in your, with the engines being used? It gets used on a daily basis. It, that engine covers our end of town, and it comes to Niantic any time they have an issue. So it, it's, that one has the most miles because it's running between both ends of town, and it's also the engine that goes mutual aid to all other towns. So it does mutual aid as well? It does mutual aid as well. So now that we're not using that, we're taking more mile. We're taking another engine out of Niantic that they would have covering their end of town to come up to to replace us now, and then we're also going to take extra engines from Chesterfield, Waterford. So we're going to start taxing the other agencies as well. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I, I have a question. Um, 
Now, 3D, which is, was the manufacturer of the earlier two. Yep. Um, do you know how long ago they went out of business? I do not know. Okay. Yeah? No? I believe you're looking at at least a dozen years. So they've been out of the game for quite a while years. now, yes. And this other company, is it Smeal, that was the manufacturer? Do they have a long history in, in manufacturing fire engines? And uh, is, is there a pro good probability they'll be around for parts in the future? The actual number of years, I don't know if top, but a lot longer than 3D has been. They're, they're one of the largest manufacturers at this point in the country. Um, going on like with France and uh, E1, which we had previously, and um, Pierce is another huge one. He, they're all, uh, Schmiel has been involved just about as long as all those big so this isn't the same league with those uh, well-known. Right now, it's, it falls right in with all those large ones like Pierce, and Le, actually, La France is now out of business. So they, they produce probably almost every fire engine. Thank you. Can I? Can, dumb question, I'm sure. No dumb question. Well, try me. Um, you, you, we're paying a hundred. Uh, we're paying a half a million dollars for a truck. Why did they twist? I mean, you, you showed us great evidence of the twisting, and the last truck that we replaced had some twisting on the ladder, and I understood that. But why, why is this uh, – why do we get defective no, – why does a truck end up in these conditions? Can I refer to somebody else? I, there's probably a uh, semi – would know, right? Yeah, that's exactly where I was headed. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, a resident probably, expert. Of all the, I was going to say, of all the people in this room that probably knows, he probably has yeah. the most experience. Mr. Mr. Holyfield, would you join the presentation, please? He's a member of the fire department, is he? Yes, sir. So I he am. can be part of the presentation because he's not part no, of the fire No, I wasn't, but now I am. Uh, the twisting occurs due to the frame rails from the... <coughs> twisting occurs due to the frame rails and the springs weakening as the truck is, goes around corners with the extra weight that's in it from the water. And if you do a little quick math on how much 1,500 gallons weighs at 8.6 gal pounds per gallon, that's a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. Having driven that truck, it's scary. Mm -hmm. I mean, you come off the exit ramp at exit 72, you really have to think about stopping long before you, you need to stop. It's, it's really, a, really a problem. Okay. But it has to do with the, str the strain that's put on it through the amount of weight flexing as you go around corners. Another dumb question. I mean, are they making them better now? I mean, are they making them so? Uh, listen, they know they have to carry this much weight. It's a half a million dollar truck. Uh, would we expect in 20 years to, for this truck to have some twisting in it too? It wouldn't surprise me with the technology okay. today with the, uh, the different suspensions they're using and the different type of materials that they're using in frame rails for the, the trucks, even our garbage trucks and our, and our uh, plow trucks. They're much different uh, technology-wise. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's less likely to happen. But that doesn't mean it won't. Right. Right. Okay. Good question. Thank you. Um, One more. Sure. Um, I assume you guys did a comparative analysis between the other manufacturers, did, or did you just select Smeal? Like, did you look at cost quality, um, or are we basing because we have similar trucks? They're easier to maintain. We we stickly went with Smeal because they've given us great deals in the past, and they've started to take over almost the. the more than half the fleet in the town, so we're just trying to, they're the town's contracted vendor for apparat, uh, apparatus maintenance and repair and trying to keep everything the same and save money. That's, that's where we, we went that way. There is a value to having the same truck, so someone jumps in a truck, he knows, he knows where the wiper blades are, you know? Um, but, but we probably, you may want to between now and the next meet presentation, at least in your hip pocket, have another competitive quote or two. Mm -hmm. Even if it's coming in higher, this town needs to consider the value of having the similar trucks throughout the town. Again, we have a lot of volunteers, uh, and, and we have full-timers, but uh, you get in a truck, you know how to run it. Uh, so, so I, you know, um, I, but I if it's way that, off... I then, suspect the Board of Finance will be very yes, interested they, in having uh, other options They might available. ask for that. Mm -hmm. Are there questions during the presentation part? So uh, we get a new truck. Warranty? Yes. 
I, well, I, I, don't, I don't know what exactly the warranty is, but it's more than likely the same thing that we got on the ladder truck. Which was? Mm. I don't off the top of my head. I'm not sure. I'm not into the exact spe specifics. It's probably no different than all the other engines that Niantic has bought and ladder truck has bought as well. So, but, I mean... Two, two, three years. What do well, we? Well, let's do? get let's get specific. There'll be yeah. drivetrains. There'll be electronics. There'll be the, la the the pump and all that. So why don't you yeah. get all that detailed too? And, and of course, you want to make that comparison during your competitive quotes as well. Okay. And that's um, why and that's why we came you know a month in advance yep. to to come up to you guys and just try and field any questions that you're going to have. We're going to have to come okay. up with before July's <coughs> meetings to go to the, the yeah. town meeting in August to go through all that. I have one other. Yes, absolutely. Um, I know. Previously, we, we discussed uh, the issue of radios and changing radios in the town. And I wonder if that's a sub-issue uh, with the trucks. Are they going to, did they take the radios and the electric, some of the electronics off the existing truck and just move it over? We have, to, we have to pay a vendor to take the electronics out of the old truck and install them into the new one. And so, so. is there any timing issue that might be uh, helpful if, if we are going to go to different radios at some point? Uh, could that be dovetailed with? I don't, as far as I know, we're not changing our not, radios. Not right now. There's no not, talk about radios. Don't want to cause trouble here. Okay. No new radios. Oh, no radios. All right. Thank you. You may be thinking of the independent police. That Maybe that's what I was thinking. I know we've talked about They have two radios in their cars, and we'll just lose one. Okay. Thank you for Thank the presentation. You. We'll have uh, some Thank discussion you afterwards. Thank you, gentlemen. So we'll move to the new business part of our agenda. We have changed this, the, the order around to, uh, um, to have the... Um, school project resolution discussed first. So that is 2F listed on your agenda. Now 2AA, if that makes any sense in the world. Folks, this is not a resolution of approval of any particular plan. None has actually been submitted to the Board of Selectmen yet. We were party to a update informational <coughs> session on May 25th. Uh, this is a um, enabling resolution. In other words, should, well, the Board of Ed plans to submit plans to the state. Should those plans make it through the Board of Selectmen at a later date, through the Board of Finance, and at that point, uh, we would schedule a, a referendum. So this is not a, uh, a vote for the school plan. This is simply allowing the process to continue. Um, and, I, and we do have the Board of Ed, uh, of course, Superintendent and, 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 and um, Chair here. Mr. Newton, would you like to speak to this? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, first, let me introduce uh, Matt Ritter, um, one of the attorneys from Shipman and Goodwin, who uh, we work with, uh, the firm for the uh, district. Uh, Attorney Ritter uh, worked closely with uh, Attorney O'Connell uh, in the, the development of this resolution. I want to reiterate what our first selectman just said. This resolution has nothing to do with the approval of a plan. Um, we are not at that stage yet. This resolution does one thing. It provides an opportunity. It opens the door for us to file with the state by June 30th and then continue the ongoing discussions. We have not even presented uh, the final plan to you yet. Yeah, that is in the future. Um, we have to have a referendum by November 15th. That's part of this, this resolution. So between now and then, we would take the time for community forums, continued outreach, continued informational discussions, and presentations uh, of final plan uh, uh, information. So I just want to be clear for our community and, and reiterate what our first selectman said. This is solely providing an opportunity, and that's it. Terrific. This resolution was drafted by our town attorney, looking directly at our charter and state statutes that, that apply, directly by, by the, uh, the Board of Ed's attorney, and, and cleared with the state bonding council. The town bond council, but also the state, the folks that, that handle these school bonding projects at the state, I know that we cleared some of that language. Or we got some of the language from them to make sure we're um, all the check boxes were checked to make sure we're yes. Okay. Are there any questions from the from the commission from the board? 
Yes, uh, Superintendent, could you uh, refresh us as to what the reimbursement rate is if we were to be granted reimbursement under the June 30th deadline? We, by filing uh, by June 30th, we would be locking ourselves in at 43% reimbursement from the state. For a renovate is new? For, renovate, for a renovate is new project. That's how it would be submitted as. And um, if this were not to pass at referendum, do we, are we just shifted to a wait list? Or how no. would that work? We'd no. have to go through the whole process You'd to apply to. the following year. A exactly. And um, is June 30th always the date? June 30th is the filing date to my line yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. And of course, we, we really don't have any idea what the rate would be the following year for reimbursement. Well, over the years, it's, it's gotten worse. It's gone down. So I would assume that that trend would probably continue. We would, we would lose state reimbursement dollars by continuing to wait. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So what exactly do you submit to the state in terms of documentation? There's three parts. Attorney Ritter, could I have you come up and speak to, just so we have complete clarity on the three components that are, that are submitted. Uh, and my name is Matt Ritter. I'm an attorney with Shipman and Goban in Hartford, uh, and we represent the Board of Education. If you look at the resolve clauses, we took the language exactly out of the state regulation as to what they want submitted with the initial application, okay? So first of all, you have to be authorized to file a school construction grant with the state to begin with by no later than 63016 in this case. You have to have a copy of a resolution adopted by you guys that establishes the building committee for the project, for building specs, et cetera. And then the last, and that's the certified copy you see at the end there. And then you also have to have what's called the notice of proposed projects filed, which you're authorizing the Board of Education to do. And that's simply a fancy word for the application generally. So all the paperwork would be handled mostly by the Board of Education except for the certified resolution from tonight's meeting. But the one thing that's unique about this resolution, and I, and I think the superintendent acknowledged this, is the language you're gonna see in the resolve clause that talks about scheduling, preparing a town meeting, and then ultimately referendum vote. And Ed and I talked about this, the town attorney and I talked about this. You're not scheduling it tonight. You have other things that have to happen, which is why we say this is subject to the approval of the town process. The legislature changed this statute just last year it used to be that if you didn't have every authorization in place by June 30th of any given year, you had to wait till the next year. They added a second exception to that, which was if you have a referendum that is scheduled and prepared with the results before November 15th, 2016. That language is not perfect, particularly for different towns across the state of Connecticut. We are doing our best in this resolution, working with the town attorney, mindful of your town charter, to shoehorn this in to make it work. And we believe it does work, we believe it will work, but again, the language is not perfect in the statute that was amended. But that is the language they use, schedule and prepare with results due by November 15th of the given year. So that's the kind of the requirements that we're following, mirrored after state statute and the regulations from the Department of Administrative Services. So schedule does not mean we actually have to set a date, we just have to have an intention to have a referendum before that date? We believe that, and again, there's not a lot of guidance in this because it's only been one year, and they did this for New London only. It's the only school project that got this exception so far. We do believe that we are, by passing this resolution, uh, scheduling, preparing for a referendum vote. Ultimately, the application will go in if and when it passes and goes to referendum. It'll all be sent in, and then we'll have that conversation with the state at the time. Uh, but we do believe that based on the statute as currently drafted, you are doing that here tonight. Yes. And the reason why this happened, this exception to the law happened, was New London only allows referendums on voting day, I believe. There's some, something, something funky. It was that something where, like that, correct. Where yes. they had an exception. So when they rewrote the state statute, they didn't say only if you can have your referendum on election day. They just said if you want to up till November 15th. So they really left a loophole there that we are going to take advantage of. And, We're going to try, uh, yes. Right. So, to our knowledge, the only instance in which this has been applied before is New London. To my knowledge, no the other only district has attempted to fall within this. Let me just let me just add to that. There are other districts that are doing the same thing right now. One in particular that I just was in the Hartford Current a few weeks back. So, if they're going to say no, they're going to have to say no to a bunch of us. Correct. I would imagine they'd be consistent. Correct. Right. Okay. 
But the state statute just allows for it. I don't know how they say no. Right. Okay. Frankly. Um, so the the um, application you submit lays out in detail your plans. This renovate is new, and the, you you send very specific plans in with the application. Yeah, basically the education specifications, um, <coughs> budgetary documentation. Uh, there's a checklist that we follow, um, which we we have already downloaded. It's sitting on our desks for uh, potential beginning uh, tomorrow to get everything together starting tomorrow. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Sure. So if this, if this is uh, approved tonight by the Board of Selectmen, um, does it permit um, the superintendent <clears throat> or the Board of Education to only submit the plan referenced in the first paragraph? Or is there some flexibility? Can that still be changed? Or are we locked into that? To my knowledge, from what we recently uh, acquired from the, uh, the state, and I'm at a meeting Friday um, in Bristol for school uh, construction projects, um, you can file more than one plan. The problem is um, if you get to referendum, uh, which we hope to be in, in right before November or, or the beginning of November, um, and it fails, you have to start the process over because you're not going to be able to get to another referendum with a different plan before November 15th. You follow, see what I'm saying? So you'd be back to square one anyways and waiting a whole other year to then file a different plan. So if, if this attempt works that, we're, that you're trying to do, um, and taking advantage of, of the law. Uh, the, yeah, to provide this an opportunity. This opportunity. Um, it would only be for the plan as described in the first paragraph. That's the plan. There's no flexibility uh, beyond that. It would have to be no, that plan. We, we're following the, the specified checklist um, yeah. from the Grants Construction Division uh, for this specific plan. So it's locked into, okay, thank you. That answers mm -hmm. my question. And it's due in 13 days or It's something. due in 13 you know, days. Yeah. Yes. Could I just follow up on that? Does that mean the, the price that's listed in there if, if we go, if this goes forward and passes, goes through our board at a future date, board of finance, are we locked into it? Can it be less than that or can't exceed that or it has to be exactly ending with $9? I mean, the, the total it, cost of the project could it yeah. be less? It, right. it, could, it could be, um, depending on uh, you know, how, how much ultimately the, the project costs in the end. Uh, is that what you're, yeah. you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. If it, absolutely. I think if that you guys look school. at stuff and it comes in less, we, you know. Are we bound? We're not bound to this, right? But does it still there could be the state dollar, size? Yeah, I think the middle school had dollars left uh, 12 or 13 years ago when that was yeah. constructed, correct? Yeah. yeah, they didn't use all of the money that was um, allocated for the But project. it just can't exceed in the state size? And I, if, if this goes forward and it comes back at $50 million to do it, are they only going to give $45 million yeah, worth of refund? Yeah, that's what we're locking in. That's where we have to provide the conceptual that's budget. And if it's less, estimate. then they're only going to give you the less. So it's, it's no greater. That's it's no greater than exactly. Reference. It's what's filed. Mark, is another, you know, it, another part of that question is <clears throat> on June 30th, you're submitting $45 million, $60,609. If it got scaled back at Board of Finance, at Board of Selectmen, at Board of Education, Say okay, we're not going to do the geothermal. We're not going to do this wing, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And the final submitted plan is thirty-five million um, uh, to to referendum. Is that possible, or do we go forward all the way to referendum with that figure? Well, you ultimately. Uh